Hey folks, Mark Levin here. Now, before we dive in today's episode, I want to talk about something truly valuable, protecting your financial future with gold. It's called diversification. Now for that, I only trust Advantage Gold. They're the real deal with five-star service and a sterling reputation. So give them a call today. Call Advantage Gold at 800-900-8000. Tell them Mark Levin sent you. Trust me, you'll thank yourself in the future. Now let's get to the show. Results may vary. Consult with your financial professional. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Levin here. Our number, 877-381-3811, 877-381-3811. The sheriff of Martin County, Florida, which is where our home is in Florida, will be on the program at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time this evening. Look forward to talking to him. Look, I'm not going to regurgitate everything you already know about the second assassination attempt against President Trump. I've been saying now for years, when he was a candidate in 2016, when he was president, when he ran for re-election, since he's run for re-election, the nature of the propaganda, the extent of the propaganda, is so off the charts against this man, like nothing this nation has ever seen, ever, that somebody's going to try and kill him. Now, I don't waste Mr. Producer's time telling him to pull together all the, op- all the uh, uh, times that I mentioned it, um, because there are multiple. And now we have two. And now we have the media blaming Donald Trump for assassination efforts against him. We actually have an article, what is it, New York Magazine or something like that, Mr. Producer? The New Yorker? Which some guy writes, no, we can keep calling him what he is. I mean, after all, he is the enemy of democracy. He believes in autocracy. I want the good people, the honest people, the citizens of this country, regardless of party and anything else, to hear me out here. The ruling class, including the media, including academia, including certain oligarchs, they want this man out of the way, period. Now, I don't say that they're actively conspiring to knock him off. That'd be ridiculous. That's not my point. My point is they wouldn't be upset. Did you hear what I just said? Not all of them. Some of them don't even bother anymore. But most of them say something like, we're very lucky this didn't happen, and so forth and so on. But Trump. But fill in the blank. But this. I don't get the sense that they're serious when they say that we dodged as a nation the proverbial bullet. In other words, I believe there'd be a lot of celebration among the Marxist Islamist left. I really do. I hope I'm wrong, but I'm not. 
in the media in this country? Look, I wrote an entire damn book on it. If you really want to understand what's going on right now in the country, you read my last three books, Unfreedom of the Press from 2019, American Marxism from 2021, and The Democrat Party Hates America from 2023. Now, there might be people listening saying, oh, there he is with his books. You know what? Why wouldn't I cite things that I've already talked about and put together and researched? Why, what is so wrong about citing what I've done? I don't cite it to pat myself on the head. Ladies and gentlemen, I have more awards, more number one this. It, it's irrelevant. I have laid it out, chapter and verse, literally. We don't have a free press. There is a Marxist Islamist revolution that's been taking place in the country. And they have found a home in the Democrat Party, which is constantly attacking and ripping at the fiber of this nation. So I fear, but I believe, there's a lot of crocodile tears out there. Well, we missed that one. But you know, Trump brought up Haiti. What? You know, Trump called Kamala Harris stupid. What? When you call somebody Hitler for 10 years, unrelentingly, when you call him a psycho, what are they, what are they called? A dictator, unrelentingly, for 10 years. When you do that, and you're the president of the United States, and the vice president of the United States, and a former president, in the case of Obama, they're apparatchiks. When they set up organizations to fundraise off of the same, it resonates. Not with smart people, and by that I don't mean book smart, smart people, they use their noggin. Not with serious people. But we're a big country, 330 million people. If that stuff resonates with one-tenth of one one-hundredth percent of the population, that's a lot. That's a lot. This whole notion of the 1619 Project, this whole notion of critical race theory, of DEI, of ESG, this endless repetition of this white dominant society, of this illegitimate society, of this unequal, now inequitable society, of this unjust society, day in and day out from the media, day in and day out from the Democrats, day in and day out from their candidates. It has an impact. It has an impact. And that's the truth. The stuff that's being taught in our colleges and universities, it's absolute filth. Marxism, fascism, anti-Semitism, Islamism. All of which push violence. Now the Democrat Party is not that upset about violence. They're upset about violence they don't like. What are you talking about, Mark? The southern border is violent every minute of every day. Our inner cities, some aspects of it, are no-go zones by anybody. I don't care if you're black, white, Asian, doesn't matter. They're no-go zones. You can't go there. They're too damn dangerous. And so what's the answer? To attack the cops. To attack the cops. There's a lot of violence in this country. And it's being spread by a lot of ideologues. Now, the funny thing is, we constitutional conservatives, we're not ideologues. I've explained this at some length in the past. What do we mean by this? May I say I wrote about it in Liberty and Tyranny. We're not ideologues. Yes, we have a philosophy. We have principles. That's a good thing. But we're not ideologues. That is... We will adjust our thinking, depending on the events that occur. We will adjust our thinking in terms of our politics and so forth, depending on what's taking place. Not flip-flop. We will apply our principles to new sets of facts. It's that simple. But if you're an ideologue and you push an agenda and it doesn't work, you blame the people. 
you keep pushing the agenda. That's an ideologue. That's a, a zombie. We're not ideologues and we're not zombies. We see what's going on on the street under this administration, the violence against Jews, the black-on-black violence like we've never seen before in Chicago and other cities. This should be unacceptable. So what do they do? They slash the budgets of the cops. It's the cops' fault. Excuse me. But this targeting and dehumanization, this is a part of the Marxist Islamist strategy. You don't believe me? Clarence Thomas. The New York Times, the Washington Post, their media. The Democrats in Congress. Joe Biden. It's endless, the war on Clarence Thomas. They've turned him into a non-human. They did the same thing to Robert Bork. They did the same thing to Brent Kavanaugh. Which Kamala Harris led that effort. They're doing the same thing to say, say Alito and his wife. In fact, they're doing it to the Supreme Court. The dehumanization of the justices. Look, I have strong disagreements. And I voiced them in a strong way. These people are relentless in the kind of words they use. And they're part of the ruling class. They're part of the establishment. They're not just outsiders. These media organizations, they're not just media organizations. They're part of the ruling class. Look at the way they talk about Netanyahu. They turn Netanyahu into a monster. God forbid if somebody put a bullet into him, they'd be cheering here in the United States too, just like they cheer overseas. When we were hit on 9-11, these mentalities... Marxist Islamist mentalities have taken hold of the Democrat Party. They are spread by the media. Every now and then, I'm asked, take a look at media. I can't stand that site. Okay, so I look. Day in and day out, it's a hate machine against Trump. It's a hate machine against his closest advisors. Day in and day out. They twist. They take words out of, out of context. But most people don't know about them. I've probably made them famous or at least infamous. But we now have media immediately after this second assassination attempt. Immediately. It's Trump's fault. Lester Holt. What Trump said about Haiti, what Trump said about Silver Spring and the eating of animals. What the hell does that have to do with anything? That is no relationship. This wasn't as I said when I was asked about this last night. This potential killer wasn't a Haitian. He didn't have Haiti on his mind. But the way they take Trump's words and they twist them, he's a racist. Why? Charlottesville. Joe Biden tells us it was because of Trump's comments in Charlottesville he decided to run. The neo-Nazis, the Klansmen. So he's a neo-Nazi, he's a Klansman, he's Hitler, this man who's done more for the Jews in the United States, who's done more for the Israelis than any president in American history? Facts don't matter. Reality doesn't matter. And they're not going to stop. Because we've seen something new in the last 24 hours. They're actually blaming the victim. They're actually blaming Trump. They're not going to back off. They have dehumanized him in the minds of millions. They've dehumanized Netanyahu in the minds of millions. They've dehumanized Clarence Thomas and Kavanaugh and Alito in the minds of millions. Hell, they've dehumanized the founders of this country. They've dismissed the founding of this country. Our morals, our ethics, our values are being destroyed, as they must be. As I explained in American Marxism, 
Everything's got to go. The status quo has to go. The more prominent, the more successful, the more threatening, they need to go, first of all. You're trying to put a man in prison who's running for president. The communications director, whatever the hell they call him, who works under Bragg, said this case is phony from day one, like we all knew, but it didn't matter. And so Kamala Harris and the rest keep calling him a convicted felon. Convicted felon? This is like the Dreyfus case, for God's sakes. We have a special counsel who operates like an old Soviet prosecutor. He's told no time and again by the Supreme Court, no by a federal judge in Florida. They tell him no, 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 and he says yes, yes, yes. And the things that they put in their filings that are completely unnecessary are intended to influence the public, not just the jury pool. It's election time. So whether it's these prosecutors, whether it's many of these judges who do and say the things they say and do from the bench, I'm supposed to sit here and pretend what I know is not true? That so many people on cable TV, so many people at the New York Times and the Washington Post, so many people are really concerned about Donald Trump's welfare baloney. They could care less. And the proof is in the pudding. They're not going to stop. They take no responsibility. And in fact, they blame the victim. It's sickening. I'll be right back. Mark Levin. The cracks in our economy are widening by the day. We've got a labor market that's cooling faster than expected. Unemployment jumped to the highest since the end of 2021. The market could be in free fall any day as investors panic over a potential recession. Now, some bank stocks are getting hammered as fears of a downturn grow. Even the Fed is talking about rate cuts to prop things up. In uncertain times like these, you need a solid plan for your wealth. That's where gold comes in. It's been the ultimate safe haven for as long as we've used money. And when it comes to gold, I trust Advantage Gold. They're a top-rated American gold company and can help you protect your hard-earned money. Call Advantage Gold now at 800-900-8000 for a free gold investment kit and to see if you qualify for $1,000 in free silver. Don't wait. Call 800-900-8000 today. That's 800-900-8000. Tell the Mark Levin sent you. That's 800-900-8000. Performance may vary. You should always consult your financial and tax professional. I like the early Patriot Press, folks. Today's newsrooms and journalists are mostly hostile to America's founding principles traditions and institutions they do not promote free speech and press freedom despite their self-serving and self-righteous claims in fact they serve as social filters attempting to enforce uniformity of thought and social and political activism centered on the on the left's ideology and agenda issues events groups and individuals that do not fit the narrative are dismissed or diminished those that do fit the narrative are elevated and celebrated Of course, this paradigm greatly influences the culture, the government, and the national psyche. It defines a media-created reality, whether or not it has a basis in true reality, around which individuals organize their thoughts, beliefs, and in some cases, their lives. That's the American media today. More when I return. This is Mark Levin with an urgent message. We are living in grave and dark economic times that are going to get worse. We just saw an abysmal jobs report while unemployment shot up to the highest level since the end of 2021. Meanwhile, the stock market looks like a gamble. Many banks are getting crushed as recession fears mount. The S&P banks index fell 2.4% in a single day. That's a lot. Regional banks fell nearly 3%. That's even more. These are bad signs. Even the Fed is talking about rate cuts. You need to protect your wealth. That's where diversification and gold comes in. It's been a bedrock of wealth preservation for centuries. And the best company I know of is Advantage Gold. 
Their experts can help you protect your savings from economic chaos. Call now, 800-900-8000 for a free gold investment kit and see if you qualify for $1,000 in free silver. That's 800-900-8000. Don't wait. Call now. Tell them Mark Levin sent you. Performance may vary. You should always consult your financial and tax professional. The Mark Levin Show, live and national at 877-381-3811. Now, this would-be killer contributed 19 times. Look, I'm not going to hide anything here. 19 times to Democrats. Uh, He went over to Ukraine to fight there. Uh, Some people have a conspiracy theory there. I do not. Uh, Let's see. What else do we know about this guy? Well, let me tell you what the New York Post found. This is a, a headline. Joe Marino. Chris Nessie, Caitlin McCormick, and Stephen Nelson, alleged would-be Trump assassin Ryan Ruth of Hawaii, echoed Harris Biden's anti-Trump rhetoric as he backed Democrat candidates. The alleged gunman, who who, who authority said targeted former President Donald Trump while he golfed in Florida on Sunday afternoon, previously declared on social media that democracy is on the ballot, This year, we cannot lose, echoing the anti-Trump rhetoric used by Harris and Biden. Ruth, who has a lengthy criminal record from North Carolina, frequently posted about politics and exclusively donated to Democrat candidates and causes dating back to 2019, so he was radicalized and worse. He also bashed Trump in an April 22 post on X. He declared democracy is on the ballot and we cannot lose. He advised Biden, 81, in an April 22 ex post when he was still running for re-election to run a campaign around keeping America democratic and free. He claimed Trump wants to make American American slaves. Yeah. Hold on here. Against master. Slaves against master. Democracy is on the ballot, he says again, and we cannot lose. A slogan it goes on and on and on. We cannot afford to fail. The world is counting on us to show the way. Similar to language Harris continues to use in the campaign trail on August 29, she said at a rally in Savannah, Georgia, we are fighting for our democracy. On July 31, she said in an event in Houston that our fundamental freedoms are on the ballot. So is our democracy. After using identical wording, At a sorority event the same day, Tom Fitton, president of conservative legal group Judicial Watch, good man, told the Post it's no coincidence that Ruth repeated Kamala's and Joe's extremist rhetoric against Trump. Trump, at this point, at this point, it is inexcusable. It is inexcusable, but they're excusing it as I speak. Spokespeople for Biden and Harris did not immediately respond to requests for comment, and. um, I just find this, I'm not going to allow them, at least not on this show, I'm not going to allow them to pretend they have no role in the, in the, in the evil that is swirling around us. I'm not going to allow that because the only way we're ever going to have an accountability of what's going on in our media and the, 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 the simultaneous conduct of the Democrat candidates and apparatchiks in the Democrat Party is if they're called out. If we pretend otherwise, oh, it's it's, it's not going to get resolved. And then they blame it on Trump? You know, Trump, they say, Trump caused this, Trump caused that. No, he didn't. He didn't cause anything. He didn't cause anything. And the man's almost been killed... I mean, they've, they, they wanted to kill him twice in 60 days. Who do you mean they, Mark? I mean people who don't want Trump to be president. What, who do you think I mean? And so they want, to, uh, they want to attack this way. Let me see if I can pull this up without any further problem on my iPhone. Oh, looks like a problem here. Do you remember that? you remember that Independence Hall speech Biden gave before the election with the with the red background in front of Independence Hall, almost like the Devil's Den, 
and how angry he was screaming about Trump being a threat. I'm not joking either. I'll be perfectly honest with you. Joe Biden, since the day he entered politics, has been a very vile, angry, nasty, demagogic politician. I see today he's speaking at, uh, I forget which black college it was, but he's getting a standing ovation of sorts, and I'm thinking, really? Really? The man who tried to prevent little black kids from going to school with little white kids? Seriously? Where there's letters praising him from George Wallace and James Eastland? Are you kidding me? And he's praised? And, uh, but he opens it by saying, look, we don't agree with violence. We don't this, we don't that. There was a lot of violence going on in 2020 in our streets, and Joe Biden barely, barely burped a word out. There's a lot of violence going on in our inner cities, and Joe, violence barely, Joe Biden barely lifts a finger. There's a ton of violence going on in our border. I should say plural, borders. And Joe Biden does nothing. In fact, he unleashed that open border. So what do we make of this? When you look at the history of the Democrat Party, it is a very, very violent party. When you look at the history of the Democrat Party, it is a very, very violent party. It started the Civil War because it wanted to retain slavery. And as I've written and as I've told you, and the Democrat Party hates America, the Democrat Party was not only the Confederacy, but the war between the North and the South, the Union and the Confederacy, was a war between the Republican Party and the Democrat Party. Pretty much. And they wouldn't stop. After the war was over, they formed the Klan. And did horrendous things to black people. They still wouldn't stop. Plessy versus Ferguson, 1896. It's a long time after the Civil War, 30 years later. Their court, their Supreme Court, ruled separate but equal as equal. The Louisiana railroad system was privately owned. Back then, most railroad systems were. And they wanted to allow black passengers in the deep south in Louisiana to uh, to have seats with white passengers. And so they were sued. And the Supreme Court said, no, the state can prevent you from doing that. Separate but equal can be equal. And that went on until the 1950s, Brown versus Board of Education. Now we have a slight, slightly different thing going on. It's more ideological than party even though this ideology has found a home in the party. Marxism is violent. It is violent. Show me anywhere where it's not. It is a brutal ideology that demands, no, commands compliance. Period. And they have their media. They always do. Islamism as again, separating it from mainstream Muslim uh, religion, the mainstream Muslim religion, Islamists are violent. They'll tell you they're violent, and they'll write about their violence in their mission statements, like Hamas and so forth. Violent. Marxism is not only violent, Marx calls for violence if necessary in the Communist Manifesto. There will be a period of despotism, quote-unquote, But that period of despotism never ends. Your founding fathers, your framers of the Constitution, violence was a last resort. They believed in the civil society, not the iron fist. And when you look at your Constitution, they didn't create a central government that has all this power and all this control over the individual. They would later add a Bill of Rights to protect the individual from the government that they just created. And the whole point about separation of powers and checks and powers is to limit the power-hungry 
is to limit the potential for violence. The whole point about the Electoral College is to create as much harmony among the states as possible because you can't simply go by population. There would never have been a country where you'd have basically 10 big states that would have formed the United States of America. No, they said we have all kinds of diverse populations, diverse geography, different agriculture, different industry and commerce and so forth. And they came up with this genius plan, the Electoral College. They invented every aspect of this government. The Supreme Court, they invented it. The presidency, they invented it. The bicameral Congress. The House elected directly by the people. The state legislature by the states, at least back then. They invented the whole thing. So there'd be checks and balances on mobocracy, checks and balances on centralized police state power. There'd be representative input by all sectors of the country, representing all sectors of geography, of lifestyle, of population. And it's under attack. Get rid of the Electoral College, they tell us. Well, that would destroy the comedy, C-O-M-I-T-Y, that was created for we the people. And so when you stand up against this stuff, you're attacked with the most vile lies and comments. It, you know, I, I can just recall, how long ago was it, Mr. Producer, when I was called an anti-Semite? CNN, the rest of the media, because I dared to question Wolf Blitzer. I even misspoke a word, or it was misheard. It didn't matter. I was an anti-Semite. So the goal was to character assassinate, to destroy. Now, there are real anti-Semites. There are real self, uh, uh, self-hating Jews. There are real Islamists. There are real Marxists. There are real... Fine. But to call Donald Trump Hitler, when he's the greatest friend Jews in this country or outside this country have ever had, doesn't get any sicker than this. Doesn't get any sicker than this. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. The cracks in our economy are widening by the day. We've got a labor market that's cooling faster than expected. Unemployment jumped to the highest since the end of 2021. The market could be in free fall any day as investors panic over a potential recession. Now, some bank stocks are getting hammered as fears of a downturn grow. Even the Fed is talking about rate cuts to prop things up. In uncertain times like these, you need a solid plan for your wealth. That's where gold comes in. It's been the ultimate safe haven for as long as we've used money. And when it comes to gold, I trust Advantage Gold. They're a top-rated American gold company and can help you protect your hard-earned money. Call Advantage Gold now at 800-900-8000 for a free gold investment kit and to see if you qualify for $1,000 in free silver. Don't wait. Call 800-900-8000 today. That's 800-900-8000. Tell the Mark Levin sent you. That's 800-900-8000. Performance may vary. You should always consult your financial and tax professional. There are heroes. There are heroes. The uh, Secret Service agent who shot at the at this guy, Ruth, because he saw the nuzzle, which is amazing, as everybody knows. He's a hero. That does not explain why the perimeter of the golf course, even if you're not going to watch it 24-7. Do you know how many golf carts there are, Mr. Producer, in Florida? Now, I have to say, I went, when I went to interview Donald Trump, the, uh, the security was much, 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 much stronger than it had been when I'd been there before. There were streets cut off and so forth. I mean, it was very significantly changed. But when the man's on the move, the security has to be on the move, too. What I still don't comprehend, and I guess somebody will find an answer, we didn't get anything, really. This, today's presser was useless, pointless. Why weren't they checking the perimeter? I mean, why don't you have a vehicle or something? As he's playing golf, they talk about their 
the level of protection on the course. Great. Well, why don't you have them outside the course, walking the course when he's playing up? Do you see what I mean, Mr. Bidu? It's just common sense to me. If the threat is outside the golf course, potentially, then you need to be looking outside the golf course. I just point this out because there's a simple answer to this, and it's not that costly. Have a couple of agents out on the perimeter where he's playing golf. In this case, the perimeter being up against the road, walking the line. That's it. Does that cost $400 billion? I don't think so. I noticed the acting head of the uh, Secret Service couldn't praise Joe Biden enough. Did you notice that, Mr. Producer? Praise him for what? Well, he said we can use whatever resources we want and so forth and so on. Well, okay. But it almost happened again. I don't know what that was all about. That was strange. I did make the point. On uh, There was no life, liberty, and Levin last night. We had news, but they did ask if I would call in, so I did. And I made the point. Who's in charge? There was dead air intentionally. I, I wanted there to be dead air. I didn't ask them, but it was dead air. Who's in charge? Is it Biden? No. Is it Harris? No. Is it the Attorney General? And I made the point under Attorney General Meese and with President Reagan. Meese would have been put in charge. He would have had to bring all the agencies and departments under him. He would have given them 48 hours to fix this and put a report right on his lap to make sure it would never, ever, ever happen again. I guess they heard me, Mr. Producer. We'll be right back. This segment of the podcast is exclusively sponsored by Pure Talk. Pure Talk offers great coverage and can save your family money on your wireless bill every single month. Go to puretalk.com to find the plan that's right for you. Thank you again for listening, and thank you so much for this sponsorship, Pure Talk. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Hello, America. Mark Levin here. Our number, 877-381-3811, 877-381-3811. By the way... This guy's a real nut job. He went to Ukraine in 2022. They told him that he's 56 years old with no military experience so that he wouldn't be an ideal candidate, and they told him to leave. So then he hatches this weird scheme to recruit 3,000 Afghans to fight in Ukraine. The Ukrainian International Unit told him that he's nuts to get lost. I just bring that up because I don't understand what, with all the Ukrainian conspiracy theory crap going on right now, but there's enough here to deal with. Let's just take it at face value. That is, maybe there are others involved. I seriously doubt it's Ukraine, but maybe there are others involved. But there's simple things here. Ladies and gentlemen, look, I'm, I'm no expert on this stuff. Just common sense to me. In Butler, Pennsylvania... There's a guy on a roof. How the hell did that happen? It's the bottom line for me. Number two, you got Trump's golf course. You got Trump's golf course. You assign Secret Service agents to do what they normally do inside the property, a hole or two ahead, checking things out, and thank God there was this hero who saw what he saw. That's luck in many ways, too. But why wouldn't you circle the perimeter? Or when he's playing golf. Mr. Producer, look. He's playing golf. He's on the fifth hole. So why wouldn't you have some kind of a vehicle? I don't care what it is. Are these men walking? Along the exterior perimeter of the golf course while that's going on. I don't know. People are trained to understand these things. To take a look at at a field and know what to do. It's like these great generals. Like Patton could look at a field immediately and know what to do. Immediately. Immediately. Ulysses S. Grant was the same way. He could look at a field and he would know what to do. 
I guess we don't have any of those today. But I want to make another point. Yes, the Secret Service agent who saw the barrel of that rifle and didn't wait and fired at it and wound up chasing this nut job off. He's a hero. I'd like to meet him one day, wouldn't you? I'd like to know who he is. But that doesn't mean the enterprise is sound. There are heroes, a lot of great heroes. You know, in the Pickett's Charge, there were many heroes. But what a dumb idea. Pickett himself warned Robert E. Lee, this isn't going to work, this isn't going to work, and now they call it Pickett's Charge. When it was over, he said to Lee, I told you, look what you've done, you've lost the war. Because his right-hand man, Longstreet, had been killed by a friendly bullet. Longstreet, by the way, was another guy who could look at a battlefield and figure it out right away. I'm just saying, this isn't even, you know, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin. This is President Trump's backyard. This is his golf course. It's The deployment should be pretty routine at this point, particularly increased, yes. But to me, it just seems basic. Here we are again talking about the perimeter. The perimeter. You don't even have to seal off the entire perimeter. Just have agents walk the perimeter. You could have a few 50 feet up, 100 feet up, also along where the president is. You walk in the perimeter, and they would have found the guy. Well, Mark, 2020. Well, that's all I've got. I'm not in charge. Not that I should be. But I'm just making the point that things are not right. And this hysterical language that's used by the Democrat Party and their media is not going to stop. They've made it abundantly clear that it's not going to stop. Because now they're blaming Trump. I have an article here. Let's see if I can find it. New York Magazine. Typical left-wing, nearly bankrupt enterprise, in my humble opinion. This guy, Jonathan Chia, who's well-known ab- among left-wing kooks. And the title of this piece is, Donald Trump is a threat to democracy and saying so is not incitement. Posing political violence does not mean ignoring authoritarianism. Got that? So we're going to keep using this. As a matter of fact, we are righteous in what we are doing. Lester Holt, as I talked about, I want to focus a little more in on this. Lester Holt blames Trump for the latest assassination attempt. And uh, by pointing to his comments on Haiti, Springfield, Ohio. Let's listen to a few of these, Mr. Producer. Let's see here. Do we have... uh, Listen to Holt. Cut nine, go. Today's apparent assassination attempt comes amid increasingly fierce rhetoric on the campaign trail itself. Mr. Trump, his running mate, J.D. Vance, continue to make baseless claims about Haitian immigrants in Ohio. Mm-hmm. There you go. It's their fault. Uh, no, it's not their fault, Lester, if I may call you that. Then we have Alex Nitwit. A.K.A. Alex Witt, anchor on MSNBC yesterday. Cut 10, go. What can we all do to take the temperature down? Yeah. Uh, do, do you expect there to be calls from within the Trump campaign to do that? Um, because he's going to reach out to his... Uh, okay, thank you, Not. You see where this goes, ladies and gentlemen? It's Trump's fault. And it goes on and on and on. MSNBC, ABC, CBS, NBC. And of course, Biden and Harris. Where's Nancy Pelosi tonight, Mr. Producer? Nowhere. Wonder why. Chuck Schumer, where's he? The vile things that they have said about Trump, as they have about Netanyahu and Clarence Stein, it just goes to... This really changed in a big way with the Robert Bork nomination in the early 1980s. 
And that nomination came under vicious attack. It started with Ted Kennedy, Joe Biden, and all these left-wing radical front groups. And it has never stopped. It has never stopped. And so when you put your name in, or you agree to have your name put in for a nomination for the Supreme Court, you better get ready for the worst kind of character assassination. Or let me tell you something. This treatment that Donald Trump is getting is really so horrendous. Is so horrendous. Okay. Okay. Sorry. It's so horrendous. I don't really see an equivalency. But you know what? When Donald Trump is gone one day, it's going to continue. Because that's what the Democrat Party has become, and that's what the media have become. This is who they are. So what is the answer? Well, let me tell you a little simple answer. There is no simple answer. There is no simple answer. Bears remembering that the purpose of a free press, as I wrote in Unfreedom of the Press, like the purpose of free speech, is to nurture the mind, communicate ideas, challenge ideologies, share notions, inspire creativity, and advocate and reinforce America's founding principles. Is that what we get? That is, to contribute to a vigorous, productive, healthy, and happy individual and to a well-functioning civil society and republic. Is that what we have? And the media are to expose official actions aimed at squelching speech and communication. When the media function as a propaganda tool for a single political party and ideology, they not only destroy their own purpose, but threaten the existence of a free republic. Look at the litigation against Trump. They've been cheering this litigation. They cheer on the prosecutors. They attempt to influence the grand juries and influence the trial juries. It is surely not for the government to control the press, and yet the press seems incapable of policing itself. We must remember, we are not merely observers. We are the citizenry. We the people for whom the nation was established and for whom it exists. Yes, we must demand a media worthy of our great republic. And we begin the process by informing ourselves about these institutions. Now, I said something in the first hour, not to be provocative, but to be accurate. You and I both know there are many people in the media, there are many people in the Democrat Party, Many people in academia who would not have shed a tear if either of these assassins had succeeded. You and I both know there would only be within days, week, two weeks maybe, when we would start seeing the memes, when we would start seeing the, the jokes on late night TV. You know I'm right. You know I'm right. They'd say things like, we certainly don't support what took place, or we certainly, you know, don't advocate it, but, but, and we're seeing a lot of phonies and frauds and fakes right now, the ones who are turning it on Trump, these are individuals who would not shed a tear if these assassins had succeeded. The ones that do not look in a mirror and self-reflect on how they conduct themselves and what they say, they would not shed a tear. Those who have been pushing this Marxism, Islamism, been giving cover to the anti-Semites, they would not shed a tear. Those who support the fundamental transformation of America do not support those who oppose it, I can tell you that. And in addition to their hate for Trump, their hate for you. They tell us every day. They tell us all the time. They give you names. You're not the loyal opposition. 
You're not the law. They don't just call you stupid. That's not good enough. There's something fundamentally wrong with your character. You're a zombie. You're a cultist. They use that one a lot. You don't know how to think for yourself. We have the worst politicians potentially, certainly in modern American history, maybe in American history, but they are a sorry bunch. We have a media that is, in fact, destroying the country because it doesn't believe in the country. And this is now twice. Now twice. And God knows how many other times have been stopped, how many other times have been thwarted, and we just don't know about it. I don't know. But there's simple things that are not being done that need to be done, and it doesn't cost a lot of money. You're at a golf course, you cover the perimeter too. You don't have to be there all day and all night. As the, as the president plays golf, you follow along on the outskirts of the perimeter. Or, or nothing, that's good enough. In addition to the other protections you have in place. The protection is much higher than it was. I'm telling you this from my personal experience interviewing the president a few weeks back. But apparently just not good enough. There's no way a 20-year-old guy should be able to get on a roof and have a clear shot at the president. And there's no damn way some 58-year-old nut job should be able to spend 12 hours with his rifle drawn, waiting for the president to come to the 6th hall, I guess, from the 5th, without anybody having walked, without having walked the exterior of the golf course. Talking about we're cutting off streets. You don't even have to cut off streets for that. Just be there. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. I'm going to let you in on a little wireless trick that can cut your cell phone bill in half every single month. Other major carriers want you to believe you need unlimited data so they can overcharge you. Here's the fact. Most of you are buying way more data than you'll ever need and you'll ever use. Pure Talk, my cell phone company, only charges you for data you actually want. Listen to this. For $25 a month, you can get unlimited talk, text, and 5 gigs of data plus mobile hotspot. Do you know what you can do with 5 gigs? of data you can browse the internet for 135 hours stream 1000 songs or watch 10 hours of video folks stop overpaying for wireless get 5g coverage with pure talk go to puretalk.com slash levin that's puretalk.com slash l-e-v-i-n switching is painless it's easy there's no contract no activation fee you can even keep your phone and your number Again, that's puretalk.com slash Levin, puretalk.com slash L-E-V-I-N, and you'll save an additional 50% off your first month on top of all the other savings when you sign up with Pure Talk. You know, I've often wondered, Mr. Producer, Joe Biden spends a lot of time on the Rehoboth Beach, doesn't he? With people all around him? Wouldn't that be a hell of a more difficult job for the Secret Service to protect the President of the United States on a public open beach than the former President of the United States on a golf course? Am I wrong about that? I'm sitting here thinking about it right now. We always see pictures of him with an umbrella, with sort of a, a freezer bag or whatever they call those things, a cooler bag. People walking in front of him, walking behind him, you know, uh, and so forth and so on, and I'm thinking to myself, well, how are they protecting him? How do you stop somebody with a weapon from just walking up and doing something horrific? Let me tell you a little stupid, dirty little secret. It's not that hard to protect a golf course, particularly golf course. It's on a road like that. You have Secret Service agents walking the exterior perimeter when the president's playing golf. That's what you do, in addition to your other provisions, the other technologies. That's all they had to do. Walk the exterior. Once again, I ask you, as we go to the break, with the sheriff from Martin County scheduled to come on, how is it that on an entire public beach, where people are walking around, 
Well, there's no interior perimeter. At least there certainly doesn't seem to be. We even have cameras, news cameras, TV cameras, taking pictures of Joe Biden on the beach. How is that able to be protected, but not Trump's golf course? I'm going to let you in on a little wireless trick that can cut your cell phone bill in half every single month. Other major carriers want you to believe you need unlimited data so they can overcharge you. Here's the fact. Most of you are buying way more data than you'll ever need and you'll ever use. Pure Talk, my cell phone company, only charges you for data you actually want. Listen to this. For $25 a month, you can get unlimited talk, text, and 5 gigs of data plus mobile hotspot. Do you know what you can do with 5 gigs? of data you can browse the internet for 135 hours stream 1000 songs or watch 10 hours of video folks stop overpaying for wireless get 5g coverage with pure talk go to puretalk.com slash levin that's puretalk.com slash l-e-v-i-n switching is painless it's easy there's no contract no activation fee you can even keep your phone and your number Again, that's puretalk.com slash Levin, puretalk.com slash L-E-V-I-N, and you'll save an additional 50% off your first month on top of all the other savings when you sign up with Pure Talk. Mark Levin, the thunder on the right. Call in now, 877-381-3811. Welcome back, America. You know, I'm a proud resident of Martin County, Florida, and we have a wonderful sheriff there by the name of William Schneider. Sheriff, how are you, my friend? Good, my constituent. And you? Well, I'm doing great. And aren't you up for an election, by the way? Well, we run every four years. So, yeah, so, we run on the presidential cycle. So you're up in this November. I just, I just want to remind people. First of all, I couldn't be prouder of you, your department, your deputies, for the way you've handled yourselves. And I want to ask you some questions for the audience here. Can you walk us through this? When did you folks first hear that you had a guy on the run, that you had a license? Just play it out for us a little bit. Sure, sure. It was a Sunday afternoon. I was actually got home from church a little early. I was having a cup of coffee. And they called me and said, hey, somebody just shot at uh, President Trump, and they think they're northbound on I-95 from Palm Beach County, which is our sister county to the south. So I knew that snack was gone because my guys don't generally miss anybody. And we had the we had the bolo with the on the lookout, vehicle description, and we flooded the zone. We do what we do here. We put cars up on the interstate. And one of my road patrol deputies right up there at the Palm City exit, my marker 110, saw the vehicle and fell in behind it, didn't hit his blue lights because that, that generally makes people just run. And we got our big trucks around it, the big pickups with the big bumpers. And just forced it off I-95, did a felony stop, took him out of gunpoint. Fortunately for him, he complied. And uh, we held him in custody until Secret Service and FBI came. Now, you say that you waited for the bigger truck. So, so you're, you're, the guy in the cruiser spots him. So he's eyeballing him. He's all sticking right. with him. He's calling for help, I guess, to come. And yeah. how long did it all take from that point to pull this guy over? Well, we pick them up. You know Martin County. Your viewers, your oh, listeners yeah. don't. But uh, the Palm City exit, which is mile marker 110, is where we fall in behind them. And within two miles, we had the big pickup trucks with the range hand bumpers we're famous for. And they fell in around them. And what we do is we keep our mark units in the back just following so we don't book the guy into running because that's where you have these horrific rollover crashes. You have collateral damage. We don't want that. But on the other hand, Mark, you know Martin County. He wasn't getting out of here. We had a green light. We would have done anything we had to to stop that car. He was not leaving. Now, that Palm City exit, about how far is that from the Palm Beach border? I think the, I think the mile marker at Palm Beach is like the 9-1 or 9-2. Yeah. So, yeah. So he got, he got well, you know, do the math, whatever. 10, 12 miles, and then finally we picked him up. We, we got him, and, uh, and the rest is now history. But he wasn't that far from, at some point, leaving your county, right? At that mile marker 110. No. Uh, yeah, he probably had 10 miles. 10 miles, 10 miles more. to go? He'd, he'd been gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. 
you guys were ready to shoot the kill if you had to, weren't you? Oh yeah, man. Yeah, we mm-hmm. when I say we had a green light, Mark, we had a green light. We we'd have wrecked the car. We'd have shot him. You know, well, look, we're, we don't want to be cowboys. No. You know, nobody goes to work wanting to kill anybody. But you, we were operating under the assumption he had fired on uh, President Trump, and by God's grace, he wasn't leaving here. We were not going to let that happen. And, and we would have got. We, he, he wasn't leaving. I, I can assure you, he was not mm-hmm. getting out of this county. No, I want the nation have, to know. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, I'm sorry. You go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say a lot of agencies have a little more restrictive policy, and and they they don't engage like we do. But we we engage. You know, mm-hmm. our job is stop bad guys, and that was the baddest of the bad. And I just want the nation to know how professional the Martin County Sheriff's Office is, the whole department. Anytime I meet somebody, they're just as, well, that's because it's you, Mark. No, they don't all know who I am. But they're very, very good men and women and uh, that you have in the department. And um, so you, you get the guy. We saw the video where you, you get him to back up and then you put him in cuffs and so forth and so on. So you folks then immediate, immediately alert who? Palm Beach? Sure. We, we let the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office know that we had their man. We turn on, well, we had our body worn cameras on the whole time. I think you may have seen the video. Uh, mm-hmm. We kept it on him the whole time in case he made spontaneous utterance. We, we clearly did not want to uh, hurt the federal case by asking him a question. You know, the Miranda becomes an issue. So we just, just kept the door open, the video camera on, kept, kept watch on him. Then we got the uh, uh, drug, I'm sorry, a bomb detection dog from St. Lucie County came down, cleared the car. Uh, we had stopped I-95 in all directions, just, you know, in the abundance of caution, lest there had been a bomb in there. And then northbound stayed close for quite some time. So it was a, it was a, quite a scene out there. We're talking to Martin County Sheriff William Snyder, and William Snyder is up for re-election, in case you're interested, Martin County. Of course, he has my vote, but he always had my vote. Um, let me ask you this, Sheriff. Um, you turn him over to Palm Beach County. Do you folks still keep track of what's going on, or you just kind of watch the news because it's not in your uh, jurisdiction anymore? Yeah, we we what we'll do, we'll write a report, a detailed report on what we did, what we saw. We'll give those reports to the FBI lead investigators, and we're done. You know, Donald Trump is so gracious. He has sent word to the Secret Service and invited me and uh, the, and the deputies that really did the work. I got there. The traffic was so bad, it took me a bit to get to the scene. But he's invited us tomorrow to go to Mar-a-Lago, where he wants to personally thank them. And think about this, Mark. Mm-hmm. Had we not caught him, he wouldn't know if there was a gunman out there getting ready to come back. I, mm-hmm. I just gives me peace of mind knowing he can get back on the campaign trail and do his thing. No, it's so fabulous. Let me ask you a question. This fifth hole they keep talking about, the road that it is aligned with, is that I-95 or an interior road? Do you know? Yeah, it's an interior road. It's on the south side of Trump International, just as you uh, are going down that drive and before you turn in to the main entrance to the club. Uh, yeah, I'm not a big golfer, I'm not a golfer at all, but I've been there. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's right off the roadway. And this Secret Service agent who shot at the perp, I don't want his name, I don't want to cause any trouble, but do you personally know who it is or you don't know yet? I don't know. Uh, we mm-hmm. we know our agents, you know, the field, that, the reps that were up here, mm-hmm. and, and they were just holding the scene until till their main guys got up here. Are you allowed to say everything that you confiscated? I think you are, right? You've, a, long, a long rifle, and what else was it? We, yeah, we didn't, yeah, just to be clear, we didn't confiscate anything. I, I turned that vehicle over, and we didn't touch it, because we would have had right. a Fourth Amendment search and seizure issue. So we turned it over intact and what would we call unmolested to the federal authorities. We put it on our flatbed, put a truck for them. The traffic was too bad to get to the scene. And we drove it south with them following and took care of that for them. But we didn't touch the vehicle. Boy, you guys are really well lawyered, aren't you? You know what to do and what not to do. 
buddy. I'm a South Florida sheriff. I get sued <laughs> weekly. Yeah, and, uh, I'm well versed in lawyers, Fourth Amendment. Yeah, well, that's games. very, very good, very important. So, you're going to be visiting Donald Trump. You said tomorrow with the deputies, correct? Yes, sir. He, He's he, a remarkable he, man. Asked, for the ones that, that were right there that stopped the vehicle and saw it. Yeah. Well, people don't understand, you know, our, his supporters do, but the people who hate his guts don't understand what a warm human being he actually is and what a kind person he actually is. He is. You, you know, I say this to you, Sheriff, and it bothers me a lot. I'm an old Justice Department guy under Ed Meese and the Reagan administration and so forth. I, right. do, not f I do not feel like the resources necessary and so forth are being applied here. Maybe they will now, but I look at this. I look at, I look at Rehoboth Beach. I see Joe Biden on that beach. Don't say anything is going to get you in trouble. I'm just saying this. I see Joe Biden on the beach. People are walking next to him. They're walking around him. They're walking by him. Okay, fine. It must be pretty tough for the Secret Service to secure a beach, a public beach, and he's there a lot for an entire town. Then we have this golf course, and the reason I asked you about that road, that interior road that, 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 that runs parallel with the fifth hole and so forth, it wouldn't have taken a hell of a lot just to put a few guys out there while he's golfing to walk the exterior of that golf course on that interior road while they're walking the golf course, no? You know, I want to be so careful, Mark. And you know what? Don't I, even answer I, that. I don't want to cause trouble. Yeah, I, I know this. Donald Trump, I've been, I've been calling in this all. I think we just lost him. On the planet. He Sheriff, I think we, we lost you there for about 10 seconds. Go ahead and start over. I'm sorry. Am I back? You got me now? Yes, sir. I was saying he's the highest value target in the world. He's been shot once already. I wouldn't care if they deployed an entire army battalion to protect him. Mm -hmm. I mean, at what point do you say enough is enough and put the man in a protective cocoon and make sure that he's safe? I know this. Rick Bradshaw is one of the best sheriffs in the state of Florida. I know he will That's command whatever Beach. resources he has. Yeah. Yes, the Palm Beach County Sheriff, fantastic sheriff. Uh, he'll commit the resources necessary. I, I can't mm -hmm. imagine that they get, anybody's going to get a shot at that, at that for our former president again. No, I have found the Palm Beach cops to be the best, too. They're just terrific, the sheriffs. Oh, man, they are. You know, the whole state, well, almost the whole state, you got really great sheriffs there. <coughs> well, well, any final words, yeah. Mr. Sheriff? Well, my final word is this. I appreciate your voice, Mark. I'm proud to be your sheriff. I'm thankful that Donald Trump was not injured. Uh, I, I really do, and I don't just say this. I pray that God keeps him safe and well. And I look forward to shaking his hand tomorrow and telling him it was a pleasure taking that uh, that would-be killer off the streets. God bless you, Sheriff. I hope to see you one of these days soon. I look forward to it, man. Call me anytime. 911. I'm easy to find. <laughs> okay. God bless you. See you, Take buddy. care. See you. Nice, Take care of yourself. Bye-bye. Nice. He's been around a while, as you can tell. He's a good man. He's down to earth. They follow the rules but they don't take any crap either. Can you tell that, Mr. Producer? And they did what they needed to do. They did it by the numbers. And as a result, it wasn't just, you know, it's the Palm Beach County guys. It's the Martin County guys. It's the witness. It's that Secret Service agent. Fantastic, all of them. But the system is still broken at the federal level. Secret Service level. And let me tell you something. Every Secret Service agent I've met has been a great patriot. I don't know all things about them and so forth and so on. They're kind. They want to do the right thing. I got it. I'm not talking about them. If the general doesn't have a proper plan in place, you can have the best soldiers on the face of the earth. The general still doesn't have a proper plan in place. And that general's at the top, Biden, Harris, Garland. And then it follows the FBI, the Secret Service, and the rest of it, Homeland Security. I'm just telling you what I know. 
All right, ladies, what am I doing, Rich? I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. I'm going to let you in on a little wireless trick that can cut your cell phone bill in half every single month. Other major carriers want you to believe you need unlimited data so they can overcharge you. Here's the fact. Most of you are buying way more data than you'll ever need and you'll ever use. Pure Talk, my cell phone company, only charges you for data you actually want. Listen to this. For $25 a month, you can get unlimited talk, text, and 5 gigs of data plus mobile hotspot. Do you know what you can do with 5 gigs? of data you can browse the internet for 135 hours stream 1000 songs or watch 10 hours of video folks stop overpaying for wireless get 5g coverage with pure talk go to puretalk.com slash levin that's puretalk.com slash l-e-v-i-n switching is painless it's easy there's no contract no activation fee you can even keep your phone and your number Again, that's puretalk.com slash Levin, puretalk.com slash L-E-V-I-N, and you'll save an additional 50% off your first month on top of all the other savings when you sign up with Pure Talk. All right, trying to do 50 things here at once and not doing any of them well. Let's see here. Stick with me, America. I'm doing everything off of an iPhone, just so you know, because I can't get to my laptop, I can't get to my produ- my uh, printer, I can't even get to my magnifying glass to, uh, to read what I'm supposed to read, but that's the way it is, right, Rich? All right, I'll be right back. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from, from the underground command post... Deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Welcome back, America. Let me show you how crazy our media are. This guy, Ryan Ruth, he was interviewed by our media. He was interviewed by Newsweek. He was interviewed by Semaphore. In 2022 and 2023, did they even know who this guy is? All they have to do is look up his record. He does have a criminal record, and it's a long criminal record going back many years. So you want to hear what this guy sounds like? Here he is interviewed with Newsweek in June 2022. Cut 13, go. Well, I've been dealing with Russia for my entire life. You know, we had one period where it was okay, but now we've let it slip, slip back into and the terror terrorism so it's just the world needs to respond you know the why world leaders are not sending military is beyond me we're going to have to elect new leaders the next go around that have a backbone and that you know have the fortitude to say hey we're not going to tolerate this type of behavior so the media runs to him like flies to you know what and like mosquitoes to light bulbs <clears throat> They run to this guy. They know nothing about him. They don't even take the time to find out about him. And they're interviewing him because he's claiming to want to gather up like 3,000 Afghans to go into Ukraine to help the Ukrainians. And the Ukrainians want nothing to do with him because they think he's a nut. Because he is. But there's Newsweek. In June 2022. Even though the guy has a long criminal record. And all they had to do is check to find out who the hell is this guy. But they don't care. This, this site called Semaphore in 2023, they shove a microphone in this guy's face too. This is the guy who was planning to kill Trump, Ryan Ruth. Cut 14, go. This is first the reporter, Kiev? then Ruth. Go ahead. Officials in Kiev simply aren't interested in recruiting them. Ukraine is reluctant to be cooperative. That's Ryan Ruth, a U.S. citizen who set up the International Volunteer Center in Ukraine to help connect foreigners to Ukrainian military units. Now I'm talking to over 100 soldiers every day, and pretty much everybody, every, all of my contacts in Ukraine, oh, they were adamant and pretty much yelled at me every time that I suggested that we bring in Afghans. The Ukrainian government didn't respond to our request for comment. But a source close to the officials in Kiev told Semaphore that their top concern is the question of loyalty in the thick fog of war. The biggest thing is spies. They're afraid that anybody and everybody is a Russian spy. 
Now, the biggest concern was he was a nut, and they knew it, the Ukrainians, and they wanted nothing to do with him. Now, what do you think of that, folks? There's two media organizations that shove a microphone in this guy's face. And it's newsworthy. It's newsworthy. But, of course, it's not newsworthy. And then we have Lester Holt blaming... Well, we have the Haitian. The Haitians, you see. Now there's all kinds of racism toward the Haitians. That's no racism toward the Haitians. People are saying, why are hundreds of thousands of Haitians winding up in America? How else are we supposed to identify them? Why are tens of thousands of Chinese, communist Chinese, winding up in America? Why? It's a perfectly good question. In fact, why are they being flown into our country? People want to know. You're talking about a town like Springfield, Ohio. Do you know the people there hate their local government? Hate it. Why don't they vote them out? They're going to. And the governor's a complete wimp, worse than a rhino. He's been around forever. Haiti is, is probably the biggest disaster of any society on the face of the earth. And it's been for a long time. And millions, millions, billions have been poured into Haiti. But doctors are fleeing, priests are fleeing, everybody's fleeing because the gangs run it. These militia, violent, murderous gangs run the country. They assassinated the president two years ago. So we're bringing Haitians in here by the hundreds of thousands in this little town, Springfield, Ohio, that has 58,000 residents. Give or take 20,000 Haitians have wound up there. Now, just, just think about that. How that affects a little town in terms of its resources, its schools, its little hospital. It's got one, I understand. I mean, it's, it's just outrageous what's going on in this country. That's why it needs to come to the end. So, and then, so, of course, by defeating them. That's why Springfield, Ohio, is so furious. That's why they're upset. Gee, I seem to remember when Martha's Vineyard had a few hundred people sent there by Ron DeSantis... The left-wing media got angry. Remember that, Mr. Producer? Now, the left-wing media got angry because that's a vacation spot. Some of them actually have homes there. Like Barack Melhouse, Benito Obama. Don't touch Martha's Vineyard. So they all left, pretty much. Remember when I said Martha's Vineyard? I don't even know if they have a black population. Remember the heat I took for that one, Mr. Producer? (laughs) Yes, we do. We got at least 4% or whatever it was. But why is Martha Vineyard treated differently than Springfield, Ohio? We know why. Springfield, Ohio, mostly working class whites, mostly Republican. So it fills out the the stereotype and the bigotry of the media very, very nicely. Very, very nicely. So here is uh, here's Biden at the National HBCU Week conference today. Always the one to exploit race. As I've pointed out before, he is the only racist segregationist in modern times who has served in the Oval Office. Cut three, go. But today, affirmative action and the values of diversity, equity, and inclusion are under attack like not long since I started as a... Okay, Mumbles, young... let me tell you something. Diversity, equity, and inclusion are under attack... Like not long since I started as a young civil rights guy. He was never a young civil rights guy. Good God. He threw in with the segregationists and the racists as soon as he got into the Senate. He was 29 when he got elected. He was 30 years old as a senator. When he was sworn in. When I was a young civil rights guy. Yeah, when I crossed the bridge in Selma, that was a lie. And yet he's welcomed. The National HBCU, that's Historically Black College Union Week conference. Go ahead. Books are being banned. No, books, see, this is the other thing. Yes, if books are pornographic, if books are perverse, they're being removed. You know, folks, this is exactly what I'm talking about. If you don't know anything, you're listening to this a-hole. If you don't know anything and you're listening to this guy, you think that we're banning books 
you think that, uh, that we're racists, you think that we hate black people because he creates that definition. He creates that context. And here after saying there should be no, no violence, he goes right back at it. Go ahead. It erased. HBCUs, HBCUs have received bomb threats. And right now, lies and hate. His, HBCUs have received bomb threats. I don't know if it's true or not. Let's assume it is. They're definitely not alone. Synagogues have not only received bomb threats, they've been attacked. So have other institutions that have nothing to do with race. But already, in a few sentences, diversity, equity, inclusion are under attack. Diversity, equity, inclusion is a new thing. It is a Marxist thing. It didn't exist other than in the hallways of academia 20 years ago. Diversity, equity, and inclusion. Because equity is a Marxist term for the purposes of politics and economics. Books being banned. Books are not being banned. Filth is being removed from the shelves of elementary schools and middle schools and high schools. Books are not being banned. Unless it's my book, of course, and it's Barnes & Noble. Then he goes, and right now, lies and hate are being spread about Haitian Americans. Go ahead. About Haitian Haitian Americans in Ohio. It's wrong. It's simply wrong. And it must stop. Can I ask a question? And I'm serious. What has this man ever done for the black community in this country? Other than work people in that community into a tizzy to try and do anything he can to drive them to vote. I mean, are the schools better in the black community? He's been in government half a century. He won't allow school choice. He won't allow parents of kids in these neighborhoods to get the hell out and get a real education. His kids did. He did. He went to parochial and private school. What has he actually done for black communities in this country? Nothing. Half a century is nothing to point to. And as I keep pointing out, look at the border. Those women who are being sold into sex slavery, who are being raped and tortured, those children who are being sold into sex slavery, mostly black and brown kids, mostly black and and brown women. He won't talk about that in front of any black audience. But that's his record. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. You know, ladies and gentlemen, the, the vitriol is even worse the second time around than the first when it comes to an assassination attempt on Trump. NBC, ABC, CBS, all the typical radical left cable hosts. The View, Nicholas Fandacaro over at Newsbusters. Anna Navarro, she is a really disgusting person. Scoffs at those decrying political violence against Trump. Arguably the worst reaction came from her. She seemed to scoff at the outrage over the political violence directed at her favorite hate object, Trump. She said, I kept reading yesterday, elected officials on both sides of the aisle tweet out, in America there is no room, there is no place, there is no space for political violence. What America do, these folks, live in that, that they think there's no space for political violence. What America do, these folks, that's her broken English. She chided as she proceeded to list off past political motivated attacks. So this is the America that we live in. Political violence is much a part of it, she proclaimed. Navarro pivoted to saying, we need to talk about how people with mental health issues keep getting easy access to assault weapons. Staunchly racist and anti-Semitic co-host Sonny Calston, the descendant of slave owners, by the way, pushed back to insist that shooters were not mentally ill. Maybe it's less about mental health, more about America's fascination with guns, they say, newsbusters. Certainly both, agreed phony uh, conservative Alicia Farah Griffin. Pretend moderate Sarah Haynes took a more extreme stance, demanded a crackdown on the First Amendment right to free speech. I'm telling you, this is the poison that is out there. Poison. 
honest to God, do you think most of these people would give a damn if Donald Trump was taken out? Do you, Mr. Producer? No. I mean, you go through that lineup at MSNBC, the Joy Reads and all. No, I'm not making accusations or giving an opinion. I just don't believe it. Because they pick right up where they left off. They pick right up where they left off. And it's even worse this time, the second time around, than the first time. And they're not going to stop. And so this is part of the problem we have in our country. We don't have a free press. And even more than not having a free press, we have people in the press who think they can do and say whatever the hell they want. And that's part of the problem. There was one of the cuts I wanted to go to, Mr. Producer. Do you recall which one here? Yeah, let's do cut 11. This is the Sheriff Bradshaw, who seems like a good guy, and uh, spoke the truth of Palm Beach County. Go ahead. Well, you got to understand the golf course is surrounded by shrubbery. So so, when somebody gets into the shrubbery, they're pretty much out of sight. All right. And at this level that he is at right now, he's not the city president. If he was, we would have had this higher golf course around it. But because he's not, the security is limited to the areas that the Secret Service deems possible. So I would imagine that the next time he comes at a golf course, there'll probably be a little bit more people around the perimeter. I believe everything the gentleman said, and I believe he's 100% right in what took place. And that's the problem. Not with the local cops. Not with the these Secret Service agents. That's the problem with the people making decisions when they look at a map, when they look at a facility. Now, I noticed that the acting head of the Secret Service said, Donald Trump, this was not on his schedule. He went there. It's not on his schedule. He said that two or three times, or as many times as he said that, that Biden is fantastic, you know. But they know that golf course like the back of their hand. And there needs to be a routine that's in place. Maybe there is. It's just not good enough. And when the sheriff says, look, there's bushes and there's trees there, which is good in order to protect the golfers, in order to protect the drivers from errant golf balls and so forth. You're not going to be able to see what's there from the roadside, obviously, if you're just driving by, which is exactly why. So if you're in the Secret Service and you know that to be the case, then you have to decide, how do I fix this? How do I address this? You address it very simply, ladies and gentlemen. You check the perimeter. The guy was there for 12 hours. You check the perimeter right before the president is going to play golf at a minimum, and you have that perimeter traveled with agents. Maybe it's two, maybe it's four, maybe it's six. I don't know. As the president is playing golf, oh, he's on the fifth hole. Okay. So we're on the fifth hole, but we're on the exterior of the golf course on the outside perimeter. Am I missing something, Rich? And I'm not, I'm not an expert on this stuff, but they're telling us what the problem is, and I'm sitting here as a rational person giving them an answer. Now, the, the Secret Service, if they need more money, I'm so tired of hearing that. If they don't have enough personnel, then say so. And then what should happen is money should be moved. And by the way, do you know they have a surplus of money now in the federal government while they're running up massive debt? They're sitting on cash. It's the sickest damn thing. So they have that. They also have money for illegal aliens. Well, I think we should give it to the Secret Service. Secure the border and give it to the Secret Service. They don't have money for 87,000 IRS agents. We have 87,000 IRS agents. Why don't we have 10,000 more Secret Service agents instead? It's a matter of prioritizing. So stop, you know, this guy should stop patting himself and patting Biden on the head. No, this is not the right prioritization of resources here. Clearly it's not. Not in the least. All right, folks, you're my family. You're my radio family. I'm blessed to have you out there. I'm going to have to take a break at 8.30. We're going to bring in Larry O'Connor, who is a fantastic host. My knee is all frozen up. I just got to step away. 
And I won't be here tomorrow for reasons I've explained before. And But I will hopefully be here the next day. And I, I promise you I'm not whining about this. I promise you I am not. I am not. But people want to know what I'm doing. Affiliates want to know what I'm doing. Satellite radio. Everybody wants to know. So now you know. I love you folks. God bless you. And it is an honor to hand this over to Larry O'Connor. Mr. Producer, great job. Take care. If Mark has banned you from the show, we have a special number you can call to reach him. 877-381-3811. It's Larry O'Connor here in for Mark Levin these final 30 minutes. The great one. I've been doing just what you've been doing, listening to the great one for the last two and a half hours. And, uh... He made a quick call to the bullpen and got a righty in here to finish up the game and uh, act as a closer, I suppose. Uh, Mark, as you know, has been in some pretty serious pain for the last week. He's got some surgery scheduled for tomorrow. Uh, If you're the praying type, even if you're not the praying type, it's not going to hurt you anything. Uh, Say a little prayer for Mark as he uh, takes care of this injury that he's been suffering, literally suffering under. He's a, a courageous warrior, as you know. And uh, he uh, asked me to jump in here and finish the show up today. I've been listening along with you. And, yes, obviously the dominant conversation that we in this country have to have is the second assassination attempt on President Donald Trump in as many months. And the outrageous, despicable, disgusting propaganda media and how they're once again, 24 hours later, frankly, worse than the last assassination attempt where they tried to just ignore it and change the subject now they're focusing on it but only in that they are attempting to blame the victim for putting himself out there and getting himself nearly shot trump had it come and trump asked for it i want you to listen to the opening of cbs evening news tonight nora o'donnell i don't know what this is what you're about to hear I know it's not news. I'm I'm pretty sure that this is not news. Donald Trump is blaming Democrats for inflaming political rhetoric, but the former president's own words seem to be increasing the threat of political violence in Springfield, Ohio. Hold on. Hold on. Donald Trump is blaming Democrats for inflaming political rhetoric, and she can't even have that be a complete sentence. She has to pivot immediately mid-sentence with quoting now but the former president's own words seem to be increasing the threat of political violence in springfield ohio i'm sorry seem to be so this is the cbs evening news nora o'donnell whose lead story includes the phrase seems to be increasing the threat of is that news is that is that an event that has happened that you are now hearing information about is there a who what when and where there is this basic journalism is this storytelling seem to be his own words seem to be increasing the threat of political value that is pure speculation the lead story on cbs news and again the pivot mid-sentence she she says Donald Trump blaming Democrats for inflaming political rhetoric, but we're not going to focus on that. We're just going to use it as the pivot point to then say that Donald Trump's own words seem to be increasing a threat of political violence in Springfield, Ohio. By the way, increasing the threat. What does that mean? Let's break that down for a second. Now, there either is violence in Springfield, Ohio, as a result of Donald Trump's rhetoric, or there isn't. Or there is a threat of violence in Springfield, Ohio, or there isn't. But that's not what Nora O'Donnell at CBS News is telling you. No, what she's saying is it's increasing the threat of political violence. But yet there's still no violence to report to you. But in our opinion, our speculation tells us that even though there is no actual violence, we believe that Donald Trump's words seem to be increasing the threat of political violence, which is is, by the way, complete and total nonsense. It means nothing. It is literally gobbledygook. The main narrative coming out of the assassination attempt obviously ignore what is right in front of our eyes. This man, this scum, this despicable wretch of a human being, 
wanted to alter the course of history with his own narcissistic dementia and kill Donald Trump. And he was motivated by the very talking points you have heard for the last eight years about the Republican nominee for president, the former president of the United States, Donald Trump. He echoed exactly what you hear on a daily basis, literally a daily basis, from President Joe Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris, Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, former Speaker Nancy Pelosi, current Speaker Hakeem Jeffries, and every major Democrat and media figure in this nation that Donald Trump is an existential threat to this nation and democracy is on the ballot, Donald Trump must be stopped. Do you ever notice that they don't say, we must beat Donald Trump on election day, we must get more votes than him, we must win with an overwhelming majority in the electoral college? No, no, no. That's never the goal with them. No, it's always he must be stopped. He must be eliminated is what Congressman Dan Goldman said on Jen Psaki's program on MSNBC. Stopped. Eliminated. Never defeated at the ballot box. If they do want to talk about the man who was caught with an AK-47 in firing distance of the current nominee for the Republican Party, They'll say things like, we don't know what his political views are. We're still trying to figure out the motive. We may never know why this man did what he did. Meanwhile, over the course of the last several years, he has donated to Democrat candidates without fail. Multiple donations to Democrat candidates. Records indicate that he voted in the Democrat primary this year in North Carolina. He made more than a dozen donations dating back to 2019 to Act Blue, which handles Democrat donations. If you read his social media page, he sounds like he's quoting the Rachel Maddow show. He has a Biden-Harris bumper sticker on his pickup. We may never know what his political motives are. I'm sure the FBI is getting to the bottom of it. If they're not talking about that fake story, about not knowing exactly what his political motives might have been, they're doing what Nora O'Donnell just did in that clip and pivoting in some way to Springfield, Ohio, and the urgent crisis for the citizens of that city. Oh, no, no, I know. By watching the news over the weekend, you'd think that the urgent crisis is for the 20,000-some-odd Haitian immigrants who have been given temporary legal status to live in Springfield, Ohio, of all places. You may think that they're the ones who are suffering and facing imminent crisis, but no, I assure you, the actual crisis in Springfield, Ohio, belongs to the citizens of that city. The ones whose basic community needs and standards have been degraded degraded excuse me by this crisis by the Biden administration whose city tax dollars can't keep up with the needs and demands whose facilities are being completely overwhelmed citizens whose front lawns are being overrun by people living in tents on their own private property But when the great Dana Bash of CNN had the senator from Ohio, J.D. Vance, on her program to discuss this imminent crisis for the American citizens living in Springfield, Ohio, well, no, 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 that wasn't the focus. The focus was bomb threats, bomb threats that she blamed on J.D. Vance. Nobody is disputing that the that the town of Springfield, Ohio, needs help. But you're not just a bystander. You're the senator from Ohio. So instead of saying things that are are wrong and actually causing the hospitals, the schools, the government buildings to be evacuated because of bomb threats, because of the cats and dogs uh, thing, why not actually be constructive in helping to better integrate them into the community? Because there are a lot of employers there who... You know, she is not a stupid woman. 
I, I promise you she isn't. And she chooses her words carefully. But I want to make sure you caught what she just said. But she, because she literally just said that bomb threats, that hospitals and schools in Springfield are being shut down due to bomb threats caused by, she used the word caused by J.D. Vance and Donald Trump and their focus on the crisis in that city. Help. But you're not just a bystander. You're the senator from Ohio. So instead of saying things that are are wrong and actually causing the hospitals, the schools, the government buildings to be evacuated because of bomb threats, because of the cats and dogs uh, thing. Yeah, the cats and dogs thing. So think like Dana Bash for a moment, if you could. I know it might give you a little pain, but we've got Excedrin if you need it. If you're Dana Bash, you're saying that there are bomb threats being reported at uh, facilities in Springfield, Ohio, and that's causing obvious repercussions for those facilities. And the bomb threats are caused by reaction to J.D. Vance and Donald Trump talking about verified reports of mayhem in the city streets of Springfield, Ohio. In other words, it's their fault. People are hearing what they say. They're calling in. They're making a bomb threat. I'd love for you to follow the logic on that, by the way. People hear Donald Trump and J.D. Vance claiming that there's mayhem in the streets of Springfield, Ohio, because of the Haitian migrants that have been placed there by the Biden-Harris administration, and therefore they pick up the phone and call in a bomb threat to a hospital. What, What kind of warped brain do you have to have to even try to connect those dots? And then says that these things are all happening and it's J.D. Vance's fault. And I know, again, I'm just an amateur media personality here. But is that news? The last I checked, one of the N's in CNN stands for news. I know they like to pretend they're the grown-ups in the room. Dana Bash, do you have any verified actual facts to back up this claim that bomb threats are being called in because of what J.D. Vance and Donald Trump said. And make no mistake, by by pushing this issue on J.D. Vance, what she's doing is actually a form of suppression of speech. The thing you are saying is causing other people to do something bad. Therefore, you need to stop saying those things. Even though there's no evidence at all, that those bad things, those alleged bad things, the bomb threats, are directly or even indirectly related to the things that J.D. Vance has been saying. But no, here's a journalist who wraps herself around the First Amendment, now declaring that she is the speech police, without any evidence or any proof or any correlation. (laughs) Meanwhile, oh, I I dare you to find somebody on that same so-called news network saying that maybe Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, and the other Democrats shouldn't call Donald Trump Hitler, considering he suffered two assassination attempts in as many months. No, there's no connection there. But you put out a cat meme or a duck meme about Springfield, Ohio, and you're responsible for bomb threats. Oh, except for the fact that you're not responsible for the bomb threats. Because earlier today... The governor of Ohio, Mike DeWine, no great fan of Donald Trump or J.D. Vance, delivered the facts, which certainly didn't get in the way of Dana Bash's interview, if you want to call it that, of J.D. Vance. No, the facts are these bomb threats are complete and total hoaxes and have nothing to do with the events on the ground or the fact that the events on the ground in Springfield, Ohio, have made their way into the political conversation for president. At least 33 separate uh, bomb threats, each one of which uh, has been uh, responded to, and each one of whom has been found uh, as a hoax. So 33 uh, threats, 33 hoax. I want to make that very, very clear. None of these had any validity Uh, at all. Uh, We know uh, that people are very, very uh, concerned, Uh, and we have taken some actions, and uh, in a moment I'll let 
uh, Andy Wilson go into more detail. Uh, but we've moved resources uh, into into Springfield. So I want to say to the par parents in Springfield, uh, these hoaxes, have, these, these threats uh, have all been hoaxes. None of them have panned out. Uh, we have people, uh, unfortunately, overseas uh, who are taking these actions. The bomb threats are coming from overseas and they're all hoaxes. But that didn't stop Dana Bash all weekend long and other people in the media screaming about these bomb threats, terrifying parents keeping their kids home from school because they think that the building's going to explode. Where's the responsible journalism out there? Where's the responsible media? Ah, they're, they don't have time for responsibility. They don't have time for fact checking. They don't have time for reporting facts and validating what they say. They have an election to win. They have a Trump second term to stop. In a moment, you'll hear J.D. Vance speak for himself. He doesn't need my interference here. He handled Dana Bash just fine. I want you to hear it. It'll make you feel good, give you some hope as we march toward Election Day. I'm Larry O'Connor, finishing it up here for the great one, Mark Levin. Mark Levin. Want to know why Donald Trump picked J.D. Vance? It's pretty clear on how he responded to Dana Bash. Larry O'Connor here finishing up the program for Mark Levin. He's uh, going to surgery tomorrow. Take care of this pain that he's in after this injury that he sustained last week. So please say a prayer for him. Here comes J.D. Vance responding to Dana Bash. Listen to this. Enjoy this. Relish it. This is how it's done. Well, Dana, first of all, what's putting the residents of Springfield at risk, which was a town completely ignored by the American media until Donald Trump and I started surfacing some of these concerns, is that they can't afford housing, they can't afford health care. The schools have been overwhelmed, the hospitals have been overwhelmed, and they're overwhelmed because Kamala Harris allowed 20,000 Haitian migrants to get dropped into a small Ohio town of about 40,000 people, and it's completely overwhelmed the services. Now, you ask, why have I talked about some of the things that I've been talking about? Let me just say this. Uh, my constituents have brought approximately a dozen separate concerns to me. Ten of them are verifiable and confirmable, and a couple of them I talk about because my constituents are telling me firsthand that they're seeing these things. So I, I have two options, Dana. I can ignore them, which is what the American media has done for years to this community, or I can actually talk about what people are telling me. And, of course, many of the things that the media says are completely baseless have since been confirmed. That's right. And, and it, it, this is a beautiful thing. And it went on for a couple of minutes. But I want to fast forward to the very end, because this really is how you handle these people in the media. And, 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 and now he does it very even tempered and fact based and straightforward and really tells Dana Bash exactly what she deserves to hear. Dana, would you like to ask me questions and then let me answer them? Or would you like to debate me? Uh, on, on these topics. I noticed that when you had Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz, you gave them multiple choice answers to the questions that you asked and you allowed them to answer the questions. I'm happy to, hear, to be here to talk about policy, but if you're going to interrupt me every single time that I open my mouth, then why am I even doing this? So please ask a question and I'd ask you to be polite enough to yes. let me answer it. Oh, to that. I mean, did you catch that, by the way? I noticed when you interviewed Tim Walls and Kamala Harris, you gave them multiple choice answers. That was one interview J.D. Vance did. He also did uh, Christian Welker on uh, Meet the Press and then did Face the Nation with um, Maureen Brennan. In one day, in one morning. J.D. Vance did more one on one interviews with the media than Tim Walls, his counterpart, has done from the day he was selected as Kamala Harris's running mate. I've got so much more to share with you. I've got so much more to say. Luckily, I'll have three hours tomorrow as Mark will be out recovering from his procedure. Again, say a prayer for the great one, and I will see you tomorrow night, America. It's Larry O'Connor in for the great one, Mark Levin.